Hello everyone and welcome back to my efficient design series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode we begin by boosting the station that we put into orbit up to its service altitude of about 180 kilometers uh, circular. And after that we're going to add modules to it, especially a docking module so we can get the atomic lander to dock with it. And these guys can start helping out with that. We happen to have two Kerbals on so we can just send them into the science lab so that they can do their business. But uh, first we need to get this higher up and then get two more modules onto it so that it's uh, fully functional. Alright, so I've already plotted the first burn to boost our orbit so I'm just going to time warp to that. I still don't have a name for this thing yet though I think any name should uh, somewhat reference its color which is rusty. So of a rusty red. The new modules will actually be white in lighting and that's to distinguish them from the core of the station. Okay, that's 180. Now let's go over to that side and do the same. I'm going to accept that 178 by 181. Alright, so this guy is all ready to go and now we've got to get two modules, one a docking module and another a solar array module up to it and so that is going to be the first of our business. I'll do the docking model f module first and then dock the atomic lander to it and then launch the solar array module so we don't have two launches back to back. Alright, so uh, down to the VAB. Okay, so this is the docking truss, and uh, you'll notice a few things. First of all, we've got the big docking ports on the inside, closer to the station. The station will actually be, like, right here. And so you'll be wondering, why do we have these big ones close to the station like that? Well, that's because they actually dock modules, rather than... Uh, uh, well, uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I, I'll, I'll hold off on theorizing about what they're for. Maybe modules, maybe ships. Maybe a ship on one side and a module on the other side. Sort of like that. But also I just wanted to be a little bit more streamlined and having the big ones on top does not do that. And of course if you have a big big thing docked to it, you certainly don't want to have... Well, it could be neat to have the little craft try to slip in between the two, the main station and another big module. But uh, maybe that's probably a little bit too dicey. So anyway, we have these uh, three docking ports on the top as you can see. Uh, reaction wheel here. I, I could have put it down here, I suppose. I'm not sure which way would have been better. Uh, big 9-ton fuel tank. Pretty big, uh, at least for this launcher, is heavy. So uh, this is pretty much the capacity for the OVX launcher. And we've got some uh, solar panel re ladders all the way up and down. Very important, I think. So, yep. And other than that, I think this is ready to go. Hmm, this is not the best view for it. I, I don't like that look. Let's, let's launch like this. Okay, uh, SAS on, throttle up. Yeah, it just looks a little bit better from this angle. Alright, so off we go. Now it's only got the one kilonewton thrusters. I'm not too sure whether I should have put the Rockamax 2477s, you'll tell me it's more efficient, I know it's more efficient, but uh, but uh, I, basically for these sorts of things I do like to put the the small thrusters to use. I say 1 kN thrusters because that's what they are in Realism Overhaul and I use them for like everything in Realism Overhaul. They're, they're like the most important engines in Realism Overhaul. Uh, so and that's with their thrust being even less than what it is here. You wouldn't think that that would be helpful with uh, with uh, the larger planets and everything, but it is. It's exceedingly helpful because they ignite an infinite amount of times in Realism Overhaul and not all engines do that. Okay, pitch program. I've definitely put enough struts on this, so it should be stable.
Looks like uh, 81.6 by 90.6. A little bit high on the Apple apps side, but that is not a problem. Staging is a bit of a problem, though. Don't want all that to happen at once. Okay. Yep, let's let's release the cargo. I think it should be alright. Come on. Okay. Yep, looks like it's all good. We can ignite its engines. Have it thrust forward a little bit. Okay, yep, I don't see too much wrong with that, except the lights are on and it's draining a little bit of electric charge, but it's got solar panels, so it'll really only drain on the dark side. Hopefully it'll be able to hold out for that. I think it should. That looks better. Alright, so let's bring this back down. We are a little higher than usual, and we've been overshooting. Okay, I'm going to aim for about 32.5 and see how that goes. Alright, 32.7, let's go with that. Gonna shut down center engine. Okay, approaching the coast here. Seem to be around 35 kilometers. Doesn't look too bad. I think I'll leave it be. Okay, 100 kilometers away from KSC. Okay, looking okay with our adjustment though, we seem to be close to the coastline there. I think I can... Let's just hold off on popping the parachutes just yet. And... Yep, can still hold. All right, now I'll go for parachutes. Gear down. We've got a surplus of fuel. I'm going to start using it off right now, just to get rid of it. Okay, I'll keep the rest for after the parachutes fully inflate. Okay, there's full parachute deployment. SAS back on. And we don't have to start this out right now. We can wait a little bit. Okay, there we are, 2.8 kilometers away from the target, so that's good. Recover vessel. Okay, so uh, close to 98% of the total value recovered, 96,000 funds. Okay, looks good. Let's go back to the docking truss so that we can get to the station. Okay, I've time warped a little bit with this, and I've got a good initial tra tangency here. I'd say 11 kilometers away. We're going to have to adjust it at this ascending node. We're over here right now, otherwise I'd have already adjusted it at the descending node. So let's do this burn to get within 11 kilometers of the station, and then we'll do another burn to get us within, let's say, 2. I, I would like 2 kilometers. Okay, this thing uh, is a little bit heavy. And it's got the tiny little thrusters, so let's start out now. Yep, probably a good bet. 
Okay, separation point one, I think, much better than I was aiming for, so good times. Okay, let's see what happened. Point two, okay. Good enough. Oh, did this too late. Okay, well, we're on our way, but we actually, uh, well, I'll flip around, and we will need to retro burn a bit before really being able to be on a safe course to the station. And I'll wait until we get a little bit closer. See how the station is oriented. It's nice to be able to reorient things. It's our target. Let's just have it uh, approach on this side here. Let's see, where is our... Oh, actually I don't like that. Well, oh, okay. I mean, okay, so the ladders and everything are here. I want this oriented, well, either way, but maybe just matching it like this would be best. So, our station is going to go from being one-dimensional, straight line, to two-dimensional, planar. This is a great improvement. We'll have to work towards getting a three-dimensional, though not this time. The solar array will just go within the same plane, I think. Probably need some sort of tug. Come to think of it, I should have just attached this docking thing to the atomic lander first and then brought the whole thing over. It's got enough fuel, but didn't think about that. Let's see exactly how these docking markers line up. It's looking good so far. Looks pretty well lined up. Depend how docking port magnetism does its thing. Got to take RCS off and SAS off. Okay, well that was just fly straight in kind of thing. Yeah, they're lined up. Look at that. A little bit of wiggles. I, I'll turn off the torque from this thing. Don't need that. And there's also a probe core here that I can turn off the torque on. So all the torque will be down the center line. But there we go. Uh, it should be noted that the, the core of the station is still much heavier than this arm, even though the arm is longer. So, yep. You can sort of see we could uh, easily have another module coming out here if we wanted to. And so forth. But uh, that's for later. Okay, now, um, hmm. If we try and have the atomic lander rendezvous, well, we can get it close. Should I try and do a rendezvous without RCS? That would be interesting, I suppose. Okay, let's uh, switch to it. So, yeah, the whole trick is this thing doesn't have RCS, so that's why I'm a little bit hesitant, but, uh, yeah, okay, let's just do it. I want to keep to my order of operations. Forgot about the tug, that's all. Probably best to... Um, if we're going to catch up, we need to uh, drop our orbit. So I'm going to just straight up retro burn here. Okay, here we go for the rendezvous burn.
Okay, 1.4 was the minimum. And we could probably do further adjustments as we go along. I think uh, a minor inclination adjustment here wouldn't be too bad off. Okay, ascending node, not a number. Separation 0.7 kilometers is fine. Let's go for it. Okay. Pretty good. Let's start retro burning with respect to the target. Where is the target? There it is. Oh, that's too too far away. Now let's start retro burning. Come on. Let's open the docking shield and I'm gonna be very particular about this if I'm gonna make this work out. Let's see. There is RCS on the station of course. So it's not like I'm totally deprived here. And of course I can reorient the station, that's a big help. We can turn the station a bit so that that docking port is a little bit lower here. I'm just going to wait until the retrograde marker is on the target. So even though we're drifting away from the station, that's alright by me. Now to the station. Set us as a target. Gonna just wanna... No, 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 that ways. No, no. Trying to figure out which way to go. Ah, that, that looks better. If we control from here, can we do a better job? Yeah, maybe. Why does it seem like when I switch back and forth, I'm looking at two completely different things? Okay, well, all right. So it's not really a docking without RCS because I'm using the RCS at a station, but still, um, not the easiest thing on the planet because this is obviously not showing me anything right. Oh, lots of wiggles. I think I just made it worse. Much worse. I'll tell you what, let's uh let's control from here. I think that's be a more sensible way to go. Yeah, having just one arm not a good idea, really. Rah, rah. For crying out loud. I was sort of nice and lined up just a second ago. Once again, the strange case of the station docking with the vessel rather than the other way around. But I am going to... Come on, vessel target the thing at least.
Uh, you can do it. Let me turn SAS off. There you go. Okay, so the Tonic Lander, which is a huge thing as you can see <laughs> compared to the station, uh, is docked with the station. And we will have to get Kerbals out to retrieve its science. Or, uh, yeah, we'll have to get uh, Kerbals out to retrieve its science and do all those things. But uh, for now, I think the best thing to do will be to launch the opposite module so that we can counterbalance it. So the lighting array module will be on the opposite side from the docking side, which sort of makes sense because you don't want the... You don't want ships to knock into the solar arrays. So yeah, I think that'll be a thing to do. Alright, so let's turn back to the VAB and look into what we're going to launch for for solar arrays. Okay, so this is the main solar truss, at least for now. And uh, you can see it's uh, well, sort of very similar to the opposite truss except for a smaller tank. That's mainly because the actual solar panels are a little bit heavier than what the the, the docking truss was carrying. The docking ports are not as heavy as the solar panels. Um, one thing I needed to do though was to actually action group the solar panels. I mean, come on. So yes, let's do that. Obviously ladders on either side so that the Kerbals can service everything. Very important. So yeah, I think uh, we are ready to go. Let's go for it. Okay, so given time constraints today, I think I'm going to launch this and bring the launch vehicle back, but not do the docking just yet. So we'll have to wait until the next episode to do the docking. And then I need to handle crew transfer craft. I need to handle a tug. And that would be good because uh, we'll need that to bring the science back at least. Uh, the crew transfer craft. So yeah, that'll be a priority. Alright, so here we go with this. It looks like I need to fix the staging again. Alright, I think we know this thing can get into orbit, so I'll catch you once we are there. Okay, so not the greatest orbit I've ever put together. 91.9 kilometers by 75.5.6 maybe. But it is a stable orbit and that means we are ready to go. So well, I'll just use space bar. Off it goes. So this module can ignite its engines. And it is free. Now, last thing we need to do, bring this... Well, hold on, let me just make sure... Electric charge should be okay, just like with the other one. We've got 600 units and the uh, drain is... Uh, well, it's actually a little bit high, but uh, that's because of it trying to stabilize itself. That'll resolve itself just fine. Yep, I think it'll be okay. Let's return this back to the Space Center if... Why did the staging go all bad? Don't do that. We got a lot more fuel this time. I think uh, we were a little bit light on the payload. Uh, I mean, of course, I had to pick between a 4.5 ton tank and a 9 ton tank. So, that, uh, that's a big difference. Alright, so last time worked pretty well. This time we're in even a weirder orbit. We're in a rather eccentric orbit. Looks like our apoapsis will actually be pretty low, so maybe I should aim higher on the periapsis side. We actually have more fuel to correct it if I'm wrong, though only if we're long, we're going, we're actually going long. If we're short, then it won't be possible to turn around. Okay, we're a safe distance away from the truss. Here we go for retro burn. Hmm. Okay, well, that would definitely bring us a little bit high, I think. And since I said that high is better in terms of making our extra fuel useful, I guess I'll go with that. 
Okay, well, we're approaching the coast, and it doesn't look like we're coming in too high right now. Ideal is around 34-ish, maybe, maybe a little bit lower than that, but we surely need to retroburn a little bit, but looking at it, I'm, I think we're going to hit at about 36, 35. Actually, from the map, it uh, looks like we might be around 34-ish. And we have a pretty steep descent because we started out at about 79 kilometers. Make sure I've got this targeted. Oh, our, our uh, inclination is bad. Um, hmm, can't really correct that now. That means we have to aim a little bit closer inland, otherwise we're going to splash down. And even though it's safe to splash down with this thing, I'd rather not. Okay, parachute time. Ah, still gonna end up in the water, I think. But main thing is to be within 10 kilometers of the KSC, so... Nope, oh, I just heard something weird. So don't know why that is still highlighted. Oh, we're right on the beach. Hopefully that's not going to cause a big problem. Could do, depending if uh, some lying legs are on the slope somehow. Okay, splash down. Looks like we're nice and good for recovery. 4.1 kilometers away from the KSC. In terms of reliabil reliability, this uh, OVX is so so consistent that I should probably use it in series going forward, just as a mainstay launcher for light payloads. Uh, it's got a capacity of about 14 tons, I think, to to uh, low carbon orbit. 97.8%, uh, uh, 4.2 kilometers, it says here, and nearly the 96,000 funds that we normally get back. All right, so uh, with that. Uh, I think you know what's going to happen in the following episodes, so look forward to that. Uh, we are going to proceed with this project and uh, see what I can come up with for new modules. Clearly, the center, the center of the station needs to be much more, much more uh, built up. It needs a lot more mass to it, and so we're going to have to build more along the center line to stabilize the station so it doesn't wiggle so much. All right, so that'll be another thing I need to plan out. With that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.